While we celebrate the massive success of the Edge Runners update, what will follow after is going to be Cyberpunk 2077's most ambitious patch yet. The game has recently passed the 20 million copies sold mark, but everything CD Projekt Red has done up until this point is to get all the systems in place for some massive overhauls and further upgrades to the game's remaining issues. Today we're going to talk about... Yeah, to be fair, uh, they've, they've been doing a lot. A lot of really, really good stuff with Cyberpunk recently. From edge runners to just like bug fixes and whatnot, they've really, really like. <laughs> it's it's shocking, honestly, like how popular Cyberpunk is right now, and like how well it's being received. Also, it's just really nice to see, like, because I've always really liked Cyberpunk. All of these confirmed feature changes, overhauls, and a deeper look into everything we know about Phantom Liberty, the first and only expansion dropping next year. But before we jump in, a quick word from today's sponsors, NVIDIA and Alienware. Now, if ultimate mobility and high quality okay, gameplay okay, is your okay, thing, okay. then the Alienware X14 gaming laptop is At your least best bet. The X14 at least they uh, mark their promo the here. Gen. Check out the latest RTX Alienware laptops down below. Oh, and so another cool. massive now one of the biggest changes planned for the next update Dude, those is rims are sick and cpd overhaul cd project red confirmed they're aiming for a i know that there's a a mod that i have that makes uh the rims glow i've never seen it on the cars though complete remake of the cop system in cyberpunk including the vehicle to vehicle combat it definitely sounds like their biggest goal right now is to give a new feeling of dimension and immersion to night city which we've actually seen already being done to a certain extent in existing updates it started with the spawn changes to the ncpd in update 1.2 last year and continued way into 1.5 and 1.6 more recently the vehicle to vehicle combat especially definitely sounds like it's going to be one of the key highlights of the new update and parts of these mechanics have already been seen in the live version since the last couple of updates. There's now many instances of NCPD car chases, albeit scripted, that often end up in shootouts against various enemy gangs. As well as This is really strange to me that he he's saying that there's scripted events. I probably just haven't come across them yet. But uh, I actually have like a specific mod to um, make the police more aggressive and make them chase you, and they just don't. <laughs> it's just not a thing. There's other random events involving cops doing police work, and sometimes even more than just that. But probably my most anticipated feature is definitely the change coming to the max tag, as one of the game's director gave a really strong nod towards max tag playing a bigger role in the next update and that we should quote unquote watch out for them. So who knows, maybe we'll finally get to see them spawning from their AVs instead of randomly running up to you like how it is right now. I would definitely like to see it happening kind of like how it was portrayed in the Edge Runner show, which I believe really encompassed that. What is happening there? <laughs> That's always really we weirded me out. There's like some super speed. Maybe like cyber cybernetic or something that some enemies have and they just like <laughs> just hop around. It's really, really odd. True raw power that Max Tech really is capable of since at the end of the day, they are literally cyber psychos as well. And maybe CD Projekt Red could finally implement that fly in scene from the start of the game that was there since day one anyway. Also, it wouldn't hurt for more NCPD variety, which funny enough already exists in game. It's just never utilized unless you literally walk up and shoot some of these other NCPD robots and like mechs that exist all around Night City. But it doesn't stop there because a melee rework is also confirmed in the works with new gameplay loop for melee and new actions in the perk menu having been discussed before. This doesn't sound as a complete overhaul as much as an upgrade to what's already there, but at the end of the day, melee is quite honestly still very fun in Cyberpunk 2077, despite it getting quite repetitive very fast with the same pattern of attacks playing every single time. So the way I see it, there's two main problems affecting melee combat that CD Projekt Red has to deal with right now. One being the repetitive nature that I just talked about, and the other one being enemies not doing enough to counter you, especially on high-level melee builds that kind of tends to one-shot everything even on the highest difficulties. Yeah, I've heard that a lot. I don't play the game on like a really high difficulty, um, but just watching like my friends play, uh, they... <laughs> 
melee is very very busted in the game it's very over overpowered um and it is definitely very uh very repetitive i would love to see some you know more altered animations some more kill moves would be really cool uh anything along those lines i'd be really happy with the first one sounds like it's already being handled with cd project red mentioning new actions in the perk menu which to me sounds like it's more than just new simple perks and new passive buffs but rather completely new active abilities or even new actions that are going to be added to the melee loop for the second problem i would say it revolves around just the idea that enemies don't punish reckless melee combat enough and they think proper deflect mechanics could definitely solve that at least in part at best an enemy will dodge or attempt to parry but never fully deflect an attack this in turn only mitigates a portion of the damage which towards the middle to high levels is not sufficient to block all of the massive damage that you can deal with some of these melee attacks so a good solution that doesn't involve straight up nerfing is also to just make enemies more skillful at melee themselves i'm saying a deflect mechanic could work well since it prevents damage and also opens up the players to other incoming attacks think of this of something in the lines of dying lights or maybe even ghost of tsushima where your enemy's stamina or stance bar should also be taken into account where just spamming normal attacks against them would be counterproductive as it would exhaust you just faster. So while playing more strategically, parrying at the right moment or even using a well-timed heavy attack could play a bigger role into the gameplay loop, at least that's the way I'm seeing it. Totally let me know down below what do you think this is going to look like. I just had a really crazy thought, which would be insane. My favorite melee combat like loop is from uh like spider-man or the arkham knight games can you imagine a like counter system like that in this game that'd be amazing it's so it's so fun it's so obvious and just it, arcadey in those games it's just a lot of fun in the next update but there's more coming to the next update and more cyberware feeling cyberware was a statement being thrown around in some of the previous live streams that I find quite interesting since it seems to yeah, focus more on the feel right here and not necessarily on the practical use like getting a buff or a new functionality. I always like the idea of the so-called cosmetic cyberware since they seem to be quite present in the cyberpunk lore and these instead would serve functions mostly related to how your character looks rather than how your character performs in various situations like combat or just movement like for example replacing arms legs maybe even skin layers to make you look in an interesting way if they also happen to bring brand new functionalities to it i'm all up for it at the end of the day i always found it odd that we were able to defeat adam smasher so easily a being that's been upgraded so much it barely has any humanity left in it yet our v even though he or she is still strong pretty much looks like a normal human being bar a few exceptions yeah this was this was brought up in the last video we, we watched but yeah some like really in like over the top cybernetics like completely replacing body parts um I, i've heard a lot of people uh i wouldn't mind it uh some some new tattoos maybe some like uh glowing tattoos maybe we love the glowing things <laughs> depending on your cyber implants so i would definitely like to see that but i believe this would also include some of the cyber upgrades that exist in the game files that have been data mined but never actually added to any of the ripper docs or in-game means stuff like for example the bionic joints and the memory boost that can only be found with up to rare quality at ripper docs but the game files also feature up to epic even legendary variants of them this was pretty much the case with the optical camo last year that was available in game almost since day one but was only made available at ripper docs a few months later and a few patches later so probably something along those lines will also happen here that's crazy i didn't even realize that there was like an invisibility cloak thing what <laughs> In any case, Cyberpunk 2077 recently passed the 20 million copies sold mark, which is actually a huge achievement and something that's likely going to perpetuate yeah, the genre with CD Projekt Red 2. It's just that it's not going to happen with this game. 
Phantom Liberty is going to be the last and only expansion coming for the game, but according to a previous investor's call, it's not where they will stop with the franchise, it's just that they will likely just transition to the Unreal Engine 5 like how they're doing for The Witcher 4, but that would imply we should not expect a follow-up or a sequel until well, at least 5 more years, maybe even more than that. But until then we have Phantom Liberty, which looks pretty exciting so far, CD Projekt Red confirmed that they're going with a new style of plot with the expansion and looking into its recent trailer reveal, it appears to have a similar dark shadow society conspiracy vibe as the Perales questline we had in the full game, which was by the way one of my favorite. Its ending was definitely a mind-blowing moment for me, especially since it was kinda left a bit in the air, so hoping to see more development in that in Phantom Liberty, but in the trailer, V's oath heard through it could imply that we're working as some kind of spy ourselves, infiltrating the government of the new USA, hopefully to take it down from within. No confirmation yet where the act- Ooh, I like- yeah, I, I was not expecting it to be like spy themed. That'd be cool. I'm, I've always loved like spy movies like uh, Bor the Bourne series. Amazing. I really love those. Also, I am so incredibly excited for more Witcher, please. <laughs> Can I, we have a dedicated Siri game? Is anyone opposed to this? Uh, please leave. Just kidding. Action takes place, but CD Projekt Red did inform us it's expanding on a previously locked and unexplored district of Night City. I'm not yet fully convinced it's the stadium area of the Pacifica, but many of these shots are definitely quite compelling including the intro shot that appears to be the fortified entrance into the stadium, albeit modified compared to how it looks in-game right now, and also in one of the sequences with the AV crash later on it seems to be taken from the Pacifica side, as the mega building number 4 can be seen in the background, and the cranes nearby which currently are scattered around the unfinished metro stadium, but it could also maybe expand on the North Oak region, which currently has a mega mansion that isn't accessible, and it's the only one that's in a semi-finished state. I accidentally teleported here <laughs> with, with one of my mods, and I was very confused. It was interesting. I was like However, running this running around that, out, uh, the expansion will feature that field a for a while. Set of characters, which also seems to imply that the story will move forward from what we've done so far in Night City, likely implying that this happens before the ending. At the very least, Johnny Silverhand is making a comeback and that's been confirmed by Keanu Reeves himself. But we've seen at least two new characters, including this one, which is most likely Rosalind Myers, the current president of the new USA government, who appears to be V's contact within the government itself and likely the one hiring us at first or maybe getting in contact with us in one way or another. According to the lore, she's the former CEO of Militech, the same megacorp that's actually been dominating the country's political scene for the past few decades, with many former NUSA presidents actually being former Militech executives. So this could further dwell into the shadow war going on between the megacorp and Arasaka that we know from one of Padre's gigs it's been brewing for some time now, and we know that Arasaka wants to go at war with the Militech in one way or another there's also the recoil on that shotgun was ridiculous i, I haven't i never really used shotguns is that is that normal <laughs> the question of this mysterious new construct of a different female in one of these shots possibly another arasaka response after the botched operation with the previous engram that was holding johnny silverhand or maybe she is just i wasn't looking you guys were looking a result of us going behind the black wall in one of the key missions maybe we got something out of it who knows because I don't see V just slapping another engram into his mind just to have two people in it. And it also rules out the possibility of this being Johnny Silverhand who sees that person since the hand over here doesn't seem to belong to him but rather a different character. That or maybe Militech got wind of the technology and managed to copy it for themselves since technically speaking we were quite loud and like did a lot of mayhem when we tracked back all of this to its creator. In any case, Phantom Liberty looks like it's going to have quite a lot going for itself. There's also new weapons that were teased at the very least, including this one from the looks of it, a type of grenade launcher that's capable of unleashing a powerful EMP grenade effect. So kind of looking forward to new types of weapons, which hopefully will be added more in Phantom Liberty. 
this is it for now thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one